The Aussies are sending Ukraine 49 Abrams tanks. Are you kidding me, Australia? If you watch my channel, then you know we've talked about Australia before and how much I love my friends from down under. First, I talked about the Slinger counter drone system, then the Corvo cardboard drone. And now with this donation from Australia, Australia is more than doubling Ukraine's Abrams inventory overnight. Of course, this is a major upgrade in Kyiv's armored capabilities. But before we jump in, my name is Wes O'Donnell, veteran of the U.S. Army Infantry and the U.S. Air Force. And I speak a little bit of Russian because The formal announcement was made at the NATO Defense Ministerial Meetings in Brussels with Pat Conroy, Australia's Defense Industry Minister, confirming the decision during a recent press event in London. The 49 Abrams tanks, once destined for retirement and the scrap heap in Brisbane. Actually, I don't know that the scrap heap is in Brisbane. I just knew a guy from Brisbane once and he was a So Brisbane came to mind. The 49 Abrams tanks represent a $164 million Australian investment in Ukraine's defense. Now, if you're keeping score at home, this pushes its total military aid to Ukraine past $1.3 billion. These tanks, originally bought from the U.S., required approval for the transfer under international arms agreements. Ukraine's ambassador to Australia, Mirosh Nichenko, welcomed the announcement, calling the Abrams tanks an essential part of Ukraine's land defenses. Quote, We've already been operating Abrams tanks provided by the Americans, so our teams are trained and ready. Their armor and firepower will play a critical role in defending key positions, especially where we are reinforcing defensive lines. End quote. The tanks will be transferred as Australia begins receiving the first shipments of the newer M1A2 variant to replace its aging fleet. A few of Australia's 59 old M1A1s will be retained to aid in the transition, but the rest, some of which may need refurbishment, will head to Ukraine. This timing makes logistical sense. According to Conroy, with the M1A2 tanks arriving, now is the logical moment to provide Ukraine with these assets. The arrival of these Abrams tanks will more than double Ukraine's fleet of US-made tanks, Last year, the U.S. sent 31 Abrams to Ukraine, meaning that once Australia completes its delivery, Kyiv's inventory will total 80. But battlefield performance has shown the Abrams are not invincible. Several reports indicate that at least five U.S.-provided Abrams have already been destroyed in combat. Now, the Abrams tanks have proven highly effective in certain engagements in Ukraine. But they're also vulnerable to emerging threats like, oh, I don't know, Russian drones equipped with explosive payloads. In response, Ukrainian forces have outfitted some tanks with improvised cage armor to mitigate the risk from drone strikes. Other modifications include adding reactive armor and electronic jammers to protect against Russian anti-tank weapons. But despite these vulnerabilities, the Abrams offers significant advantages particularly in mobility and firepower, making it a valuable asset on the Ukrainian battlefield. Ukraine has previously relied heavily on the more abundant Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, but the expanded Abrams fleet will allow for more diversified operations. Ukraine's ambassador to Australia, Miroshnichenko, said they intend to use them to reinforce defensive lines. But there is a way to successfully deploy armor offensively, and it's called combined arms, something that Ukraine is getting better and better at every single day. This is the idea that you must integrate different combat arms units, so infantry, armor, air power, and artillery, while using effective communications between all of these units to achieve mutually complementary effects. Combined arms is the little brother to the bigger idea of joint warfare. If combined arms uses different combat elements from the same branch, 
Joint warfare combines various different branches in a single action. For instance, when American infantry soldiers fighting in Afghanistan asked their embedded Tactical Air Control Party, TACP, airmen to radio the Air Force and call in an A-10 for close air support. Yet, I've heard some commentators say that it's the terrain that tanks just can't operate successfully in Europe. Not true. Admittedly, tank warfare in the desert is a much easier proposition in some respects and much more difficult in others. When the United States deployed to Kosovo in the Balkans in the late 1990s and early 2000s, American M1A1 Abrams tanks found themselves in similar terrain to that in Ukraine. Despite these challenges of maneuvering a 63-ton war machine through narrow streets, the Americans still employed combined arms to ensure the survivability of their armor. Tank commanders in Kosovo used combat engineers to complement their columns, and they employed breaching assets to clear tank traps and mines. The American tanks in Kosovo experienced six times the normal operations tempo in their fleet, a half a year of op tempo in only one month. This led to a noticeable increase in the use of suspension and automotive parts. The wear and tear on all vehicles, but especially the M1A ones, proved to be an operational readiness rate challenge. The U.S. Army solved this by keeping logistical lines secure with the use of military police and infantry units. In some instances, they moved entire supply units closer to the AO. The United States Department of Defense, which endorses joint warfare as an overriding doctrine for its forces, describes it as team warfare, which requires the integrated and synchronized application of all appropriate capabilities. That synergy, I bet you didn't know we were going to use corporate jargon today, folks. That synergy that results maximizes combat capability in a unified action. So how could Ukraine leverage other capabilities to ensure the survival of its new Australian Abrams? Well, traditionally, you would deploy the Abrams with an infantry screen and engineers and rotor wing support, attack helicopters, to snuff out all the Russians sneaking around with Cornet ATGMs. But today, the real threat comes from drones. And this is where we can combine one Australian donation with another. Deploy Ukraine's new Abrams with Ukraine's new Slinga counter drone system. In fact, from this point forward, operating anything heavier than a Bradley needs a Slinger within one kilometer. If you haven't seen my Slinger video, I'll link to it on the end card. So this contribution, along with all the other military aid Australia has provided, reflects Australia's enduring support for Ukraine. And I love it when my Australian allies help out my Eastern European allies. And to my friends down in Australia, tanks for the tanks. Ha! Huh? Get it? I'm going to show myself out. Subscribe if you're not already. It really helps the channel grow. And as always, glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Slava Ukraini.